Welcome to QB Unplugged with superstar NFL quarterback Deshaun Watson, myself, the quarterback consultant Quincy Avery. Brought to you by Lockerverse. Tap in for exclusive content and join the Dog Pound community. Hit the like button. Hit the subscribe button. If you don't, I'm going to start thinking he's a hater. On the low, use a hater on the low. Uh, but each week, <laughs> we bring you exclusive content from the quarterback positions from the NFL, college, high school, all that. And, of course, from superstar NFL quarterback Deshaun Watson. We want to hear from you. So if you're in the dog pound, you got to shoot us a note. We'll make sure you get your questions on the show. You know what I'm saying? So we can hear from you. Watch we'll and hear from you. And uh, we can know what's going on. Today's episode, we are going to talk about the South Carolina women's basketball team not only winning the national championship, but going undefeated. We have the grand openings of, of lefties in Cleveland Heights. Of course, we're going to give you film of four. Let you know what Watt did this weekend. And I'm going to even share with you a couple tweets, a couple questions that the fans have from you on the Twitter. Oh, and last but not least, lots of chatter about the white fast face mask. We need to know how you feeling about all that. But you had an eventful weekend. You know what I'm saying? A lot going on. You saw a lot of basketball. I saw you course. Right. I see you course out a lot lately. You know what I'm saying? I saw you at the Orlando <laughs> Magic game. See you right. course side for the Clippers. Clippers versus the Cavs. You know what I'm saying? How, how do you feel about that game? Man, especially seeing it live, you just – you don't realize how good both sides – of, of, of like both teams are, you know what I'm saying? And it's just like you've been down 30, almost 30 points. I think it was 26 to be that. And the Clippers came back to win. Like, that's impressive, man. And and just to watch how they just work. Like, the game is never over. And that's just the true definition of just competing to the final whistle. You know what I'm saying? And and we just let it slip. And when I say we, I say the Cavs because, you know, I'm supporting Cleveland. So it was a crazy, man, that, that was crazy for sure. So being as you're a 1% athlete, right? You in the top 1% of all the athletes in the world. You get to go out and you watch a basketball game. Who was the most impressive? Like, damn, he's doing some stuff that I might not actually be able to do. Like physically, like, was it Russell <laughs> Westbrook? You know what I'm saying? Who did you see? Like, oh, like that's oh, different. Uh, Paul George. No, Paul really? George, he went crazy. Yeah, that fourth quarter, he turned up. He took it to a whole nother level. And and then, of course, for us, uh, Darius, uh, DG, he was going. I mean, he's impressive. He, he He's impressive. And I watched him a couple of times before, but mm-hmm. yesterday was a little bit different. Uh, when we went out there and, and, and watched him, you know, in L.A. So, I mean, just the energy, the way he brings up the ball, he, way he controls the whole offense and things like that. Then he can shoot the ball and get to the rim. Man, yeah, shout out to, shout out to Tim for sure. So seeing like Paul George, 6'7", can handle the rock, can shoot the rock. I don't know who he dropped in the last play. I'm not a Cleveland fan, so I was like, oh, <laughs> shit. He hit him with yeah, the uh, uh, step back. Is it, does he look that much bigger in person that he does, you know, from from our perspective watching on TV? Nah, yeah, he's a, he's a, uh, he's a tall, he's a tall um, you know, player. And I feel like just like. So he give you buckets. With... Me? Of course, oh shit, all over. <laughs> I ain't even gonna lie to you. I am not a hooper no more. <laughs> you ain't got nothing for none of that. Nah, none of that. No boys, yeah, they doing something different with the basketball. You know what I'm saying? They got it on the screen and just the way they can handle yeah. it. They shoot it too from any place on the court. Yeah, it's impressive. For sure. Then we went, you went Los Angeles Lakers versus Minnesota Timberwolves courtside again. This time a different view. You went baseline. But you got to see my favorite player in the NBA. Um, George's own hey, Anthony hey, Edwards. Oh my yeah. God! Yeah, he knows, and he's a dog, man. He's a dog for sure. He used to be on um Jordan Yates. He used to be on Jordan Yates like AU team, like eighth night. So I used to watch him when he was young, seventh, yeah. eighth grade. And I would have never been like, oh, he's gonna be the dude in the NBA. But he be what out high there. school he went to? I don't even remember what high school he went to. He's from like the South Side, so he's on like the Atlanta yeah. Vikings and all that. So I used to see right. him like all the time growing up. But watching him now, it is like nah, he impressive. But you know, who really impressed me that that I was like, yeah, well, bro is, yeah, is, yeah. is is a is a bucket for sure. sure. Was uh, I think his name was a number eleven. His last name Reed. I don't know his first name. Oh, Nasir yeah, Reed. Nasir. With the, Nas Reed. With the, Nas dread, Reed. With the, the dreads. Tall. Yeah, he can play the four. Nah, he can play the five. Yeah, nah, he can nice. shoot. He can shoot that. Shoot, oh, he shoot the, get yeah. to the rim. 
rebound, play defense. Nah, he's a complete basketball player for sure. <laughs> I, I want to see him, Cat. I want to see everybody back. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, really nah, big love if they could do some stuff. And then the, the biggest game of the weekend. I think everybody was tuned in. They had 20 some million viewers. South Carolina women's versus Iowa Hawkeyes. Basically, you know, South Carolina versus Kayla Clark. I know you was checking the game out on your phone. You know, South yeah. Carolina became the 10th team to go out with the undefeated season, uh, undefeated season, win the national championship. How you feel about that game? Man, it was real good. I mean, for a while, you thought South Carolina was just going to pull it away. You know what I'm saying? And then it comes Iowa, and, and Kaylin got hot, and then the whole team got hot. They, you know, that's a complete basketball team when you look at them. And I think what both sides, South Carolina and Iowa, was doing for the game of basketball, for especially women bas- women's basketball, uh, is very impressive. And it's inspiring to see. You know what I'm saying? And it gives so much hope for, you know, that that lead to just continue to grow and take it to another level and, and get the praise that they that really deserve. It, it was cool to see Kayla Clark because I think I'm a fan of her as a hooper. She got a lot of haters on Twitter, X, Y, Z. And it's weird. Like, she's never done nothing to nobody. Right. She just gets hate because the media loves her too much. And I think that it that's really weird. Like, I do understand people being annoyed how much the media talks about her in comparison with the national championship champions. But she's a killer. Um, and she For was sure. out there getting buckets. She put I forget the first girl who was on her. She got her in foul trouble quick. But Raven Johnson, Atlanta's own. Raven Johnson yeah. came in the game. <laughs> she is also a Westlake alum. She came in the game and, and kind of cooled Kayla Clark off. Uh, mm-hmm. Like, when you see stuff like that, do you think about it in the same way I do? Like, when you see Georgia folks out there doing stuff, whether it be NBA, yeah, it's, college. It's pretty much, yeah, it's all right. I already know what you're about to say. Yeah, it's a pretty much, like, guarantee, like, you want them to succeed for sure. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. You, know, you got a fan, you rep in the state. You know what I'm saying? You always want to rep your state and, and show love to people that came from where you came from. I got a question that, that may, you know what I'm saying, cause a little controversy. Is Sir Raven Johnson all time where does she rank in terms of athletes to come out of Westlake High School? Because when we talk about Westlake, we got to talk about Cam Newton. We got to talk about Pac-Man Jones. People. We got AJ <laughs> Terrell. We got her. But let's just talk about some of her accolades, okay? She got a national championship, right? She has a national championship now. She was two-time Mrs. Basketball in Georgia, three-time state champion, like she's really starting to oh, rack yeah, up. Yeah, you gotta put her up there. You gotta put her she, up there. She's with right at the academy. <laughs> she's right at the academy. Well, Pac Man Jones. Pac Man Jones. She's still, yeah. But then she's she still got the yeah, she's young. She still got professional, you know what I'm saying? Whatever she wanna do after college. So like, man, you gotta I already put her up there. She already did so much. And she got some time left. So it was it was cool to see I I, I wanted South Carolina win. Cool to see Don get another championship. Um, cool to see those ladies pull off the undefeated season. I think everybody knows how hard that is, whatever the sport is. But just to be out there in that consistent, every night go out there, get a win, despite what the defense, despite what everybody else is doing. Shots falling, shots not. It was it was really cool. But you had a you had another big big event. You know what I'm saying? You you brought your restaurant, your franchise out to Cleveland, yes, sir. and it and looks like business. This is booming. <laughs> booming. Hey, if you ain't eating love, you ain't eating right. I'm telling you, pull up the Cleveland Heights. Yeah, I think yeah. it's 2112 South Taylor Road, Cleveland Heights, Ohio, did, man. They, 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 they was they showed up. How did it feel to like? Because you can see whatever you want on Twitter, right? Like people be talking this, that, and the third. But when they had the opportunity to pull up on you, I what I noticed is this all love. So I got more respect for the folks at Cleveland. They, you know, Twitter, you see whatever. But the folks, they've pulled up. Everybody was a fan. Everybody was super positive. Everybody was happy to see you. Like, how does that feel? No, it feels real good, man. And I understand that, too. Like, Twitter is a place where people have free speech and they can be whoever they want to be. But, like, like real life stuff, like, like it was shown on Thursday, was special. You know what I'm saying? The mayor coming in and declarating 4-4-2024. Is Lefty's day, you know what I'm saying? Like, and gave us the 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 sign form and everything, plat, and right. like that was that was special. It was very emotional, and just to see the fans and feel the love 
Like, that's that's real. And I know Cleveland's like that. They, they show love regardless. You know what I'm saying? That's why I don't get involved with the, the Twitter stuff. You feel me? Because I know, like, at the end of the day, like, you really didn't like me or didn't. You know what I'm saying? You wouldn't even care what I did or what I do. So you wouldn't be coming at me. So, you know, it's all it's all love at the end of the day. And uh, see, we just stay positive and keep pushing forward and try to impact the community as much as possible. And then we had Big Coach Kev pull up. You know what I'm saying? I, I, um, it was cool, a cool experience. I think for him to pull up to the first live show, right? The yep. head coach of the football team. And I think people got to see y'all relationship, right? I mean, a bit of the relationship. I know that I've had a chance to be around you guys a good bit, but just seeing like how cool he is, the relationship you have, how you guys could talk. And I think it might have put to bed any of the questions about like, who he was to you, you know what I'm saying, the friendship that y'all have. Like, I know he coaches you hard, but um, so how was it? How important do you think it was for the fans to see that side of Cat? I think it was really important just to see him, you know, pop up and, and do a quick interview, but really just to kind of show his side of thinking and kind of the real him. And then not just in, you know, behind an interview where people can edit and post. Nah, no, this is live. This is clear cut. The, the, clean as you're going to get them. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, uh, it was good. And then our relationship, we've always been tight since day one. You know what I'm saying? Like I can come to Kevin about anything and vice versa. We talk, you know, uh, we go out to eat with the families and all that type of stuff. So, like, we have a good time together. Yeah. I mean, it, it showed. It showed. Um, and then after the, we had a great time at Lefties. I had such a good time. I decided to ask the fans, you know what I'm saying? Hey, had a great time with you guys. Send me a couple questions that I could ask Deshaun. Next time we see him, we get him on, on the pod. You know what I'm saying? So I'm going to throw a couple questions that they asked you. Some football, some other stuff, all right? So yeah. at Luck Mez, Mez, name's tough to spell. <laughs> at <laughs> at Luck, Luckman Beige QB, what's the best advice for young high school quarterbacks, young quarterbacks starting high school? Best advice for young quarterbacks starting high school. So I'm assuming he's in the ninth grade. Think he's going in the ninth. You know what I'm saying? We gonna yeah, say yeah. he's going in the ninth. He started high school. Your high school experience is a little different. You started as a true like definitely, he did. Definitely. He started all those years. But let's just say he has a chance to start as a true freshman. What should yeah, he do gotta, going from eighth grade to, to high school? The, the first thing you do is just work. You got to put the work in. You got to make sure you great that you gain the trust. Of all the the guys that been around for a long time, all the seniors, the juniors, and, and sophomores, and you got to be able to go in there and show that you're capable of leading, you know, that group of guys and and that's in that locker room, you know, to the level that they want to go to. You know what I'm saying? And I think that you know the work is gonna start first, and lead by example, be in the community, and then you just gotta find, you gotta love the game. You can't get involved for me at least in all the accolades and all the new stuff that's going on with you know, high school football, college football. You got to be able to make sure you fundamentally sound, you know, growing up as a kid so you can, when you get to that stage of senior and you get to college, like everything is that, that's the foundation that's been built. Now the question from Act Fork, Fork Bombs, at Fork underscore Bombs. Are you excited about the addition of Dorsey and Reese? Do you expect the offense will look measurably different than previous seasons? Uh, I'm super excited about Dorsey and Reese. Um, and Deuce, um, and I feel like I'm missing somebody else. Um, but um, all the new additions that we have on, on the offensive side, because you know we have different minds, guys that's been in different locations and different offices, offenses, so they can bring to this offense with the type of talent and the type of guys that we have. So uh, super excited about them. With the offense looking a little bit different than before, uh, there's a chance, uh, definitely. Uh, you ain't gonna but, give him too yeah, much. <laughs> not too much. So, you know, we we building, uh, you know, the offensive scheme that's gonna be best for you know the twenty twenty four Cleveland offense. So, uh, you know, that's all we can really speak on with that one. Now we get to hop into my absolute favorite segment, film with four with the Sean Watson. We tap into plays, so we get the opportunity to show fans exactly what it is that the Sean Watson's looking at to allow the team to be so successful. So we got third and 10. So the situation we got now, Cleveland Browns are Cincinnati Bengals. It's a third and 10. You guys come out a three by one bunch set. The Bengals are showing like a double A gap mug look. What do you think of here? Because 
as a as someone who, who's not ready to break down the defenses, hasn't seen anything. All, all I'm thinking here is they're getting ready to bring a ton of pressure. Correct. So in this situation, right, we got double A uh, mugs. So we got uh, both A gaps are mugged up. And so in hey, this yeah. situation right here, you said what? No, I was just I was. Oh, you were. I was just oh, yeah, to no, yeah, I don't. I don't have the clicker. I don't have the clicker. You yeah, got I got the clicker. So you got so both you, yeah. linebackers. Yeah, yeah. So both both linebackers mugged up in the A gap. So what we want to do, you kind of want to see the safety rotation. All right, the safety that's on my left side to the boundary side is deep. So, okay, cool, we have the field safety. If they want to break some type of crazy pressure, we already got it blocked up pretty much. So we got five on five or six on six, including the running back for the four D linemen, two linebackers. You got the nickel sound out here. So that, it's only so much they can do. If they break all these guys, which is seven guys, then it's, it's, it's zero, cover zero, and we're one man short. But they're not trying to do that in third and ten. So what we do is mic the mic, which is, I think that is 55 up top, Wilson. We mic him. Um, so we got pretty much we gotta protect the uh Phil Blitz, which I think is coming. Yep. Up top. So you so anticipate this up top defender bring it. Yep. Yeah, and I'm going super slow. I'm, going, I'm actually being very detailed uh with this conversation. So I give him a hard count, safety rotates back. Okay, cool. I see that the nickel safety or the nickel Sam, excuse me, Hilton is gonna come off the edge. So I, I'm cool. I think we got protecting. So right when I get the snap, I feel the boundary safety, he robbers down. So that means that this backside corner, he has the deep thirds because they're playing this 22 invert, as people call it. People have different names. So this defensive end has to basically cover all this ground in the boundary by taking a step at the tackle and then basically running full speed to try to get it underneath cool. And then the deep half is covered by the corner. So... I knew with just the rotation and just film study that, all right, cool, if I see this type of pressure with this rotation, I know exactly where I need to go with the ball. So uh, you go hard count, right, this hard count, and when that safety gets off the hash, then you feel good. Is this what Njoku's pointing at, right? I see Njoku doing a little bit of movement. Is he letting yeah. you know? Are you guys communicating to let each other know that this nickel Sam right here is going to be bringing pressure? Yeah, most definitely, because I always tell them during the film study throughout the week, like, hey, if you feel anything that's coming across your face, just give me a little warning. Just alert me so I know, okay, I can at least get my peripheral or I can peek whenever I get the snap and confirm if he's going to come or not. So I know in case I'm hot or not, I know where to go with the ball exactly. That's really good, and it's really cool to see you throw out in that situation. Yeah, exactly. Ball's out, timely route. Uh, no one's over there covering it. So much green grass. It's just pitch and catch. And the the coolest part to me is I think that fans will typically think that you're trying to beat that you're trying to beat the the cornerback with this throw. When in actuality, it's ninety one is the only person who can really affect this throw. Yeah. And you just exactly. got to make sure you're getting outside of him because he does this one foot step stun at the tackle, and then he's able to try and get to the flat to take away these outs. So. A lot of times you'll see a cornerback in the way, but that's not the guy who can stop a throw, and I think he did a perfect job executing this play. So this is going to be a first and 10 situation versus the Cincinnati Bengals. You guys come out once again in a three-by-one set, right? Three receivers Correct. bunch to the top of the field, and then you have an individual cut to the bottom, right? You got Coop out here right. alone, and then you got the three guys to the top of the field. Now, this defense, defense looks much different than the defense that we previously saw where we got the double A gap. They're showing more of a open middle, two high safeties, um, giving you much more of a standard coverage with no real threat of the pressure. Most definitely. So you don't have pressure in this situation. So you can pretty much get up, mic the mic, and and block how the responsibility is supposed to be. But when I get up there, I, I want the ball now because I kind of I already see what the coverage they're going to get. Some people call it quarter quarter half. Some people call it 66 whatever you want to call it. And then so it's quarters up top, which you can see that box. So if you want to stop it right here, if you want to wish I had a clicker or something, I'm pointing at the So screen. we can see the, the corner outside, the nickel outside. Corner outside, the, the, nickel <laughs> outside. Exactly. So it's basically a box. It, it forms a box. So, you know, you pretty, wanna, pretty much want to attack the middle of that box a lot of times or get yeah. those safeties kind of combined on anything that's coming underneath it. So in this situation, the nickel didn't spare right away. 
because we have a vertical stem by number mm-hmm. three, which is Najoku. So in this case, I can beat him with the throw. If my timing is right and the corner is just sitting back deep because he, he has that deep pass over there, then basically I can throw outside just like the last play and just beat the nickel sound. So in this case, I'm just beating the nickel. And in the last case, I was beating the defense air. It's so interesting to me because you're saying box rules, right? And I, I hope that we can really show people. So this inside, Mike Linebacker, he's got the first inside. This safety's right. got the second inside. This outside nickel has the first outside, and then this cornerback would have the second outside, right? So those are the box Correct. rules. And just seeing this guy, this nickel Sam, he's expanding, right? He's thinking he's going to take Njoku on this wide departure or spray release, right? He feels like he's connected to him. How do you just feel comfortable enough layering this football? Like, what did you see to, like, say, yeah, I could do this, right? Because that's not a lot of separation. Yeah, I just knew that once during my drop, I was already committed. And I think just the mm-hmm. confidence and just commitment that if you throw the ball on time, yeah. especially when the nickel, he has to worry about Njoku going vertical because at, at the end of the day, hey. if Njoku crosses face, hey. he has nobody, there's nobody mm-hmm. in that middle. You know, 55 is running with the seam down the middle, so Njoku can be running big. So he has to respect that and hope that the corner can kind of sit on the out. But he's lost vision of where that out is. And yeah. so I just, if I layer the ball over him, he don't know where the ball is going necessarily. Because and he why? don't see the I, defender. I got to say this. I messaged you a lot about your footwork, but, man, this is gold, right? This is gold. This is getting your last step right underneath you, trading that perfect line to the out, right? So if we were to draw a line from the ankle, his inside edge of his right ankle, all the way to where he's throwing, it would be in a direct straight line. You do such a good job stopping, stopping the rotation with that front leg. You're hitting with a perfect shin angle. Like this – that that to me is as good as it gets from a quarterbacking aspect in terms of throwing the football. You saw what you want to do. You're aggressive. You're decisive. You had a plan when you went to the line of scrimmage. You could tell by that by the quick cadence, and you threw an absolute dot. Appreciate that, Q. Why well, we've been doing a lot of a lot of film of foe, so we've had some questions from some spa- some fans uh, at Unspoken Voices Media wants to know. Can you guys talk about the offensive line, the importance of forming a pocket around you to make the plays, which y'all shall open up the running game? I would say the offensive line is one of the, the most important units, if not the most important units that gets the offense going. Everything starts with the offensive line. And they have to give the quarterback time to be able to read and check out what the defense is doing. And that unit has to be together. Because if one chain is loose and one person is doing something totally different. That whole protection of what they're trying to do to keep the quarterback safe and keep the quarterback time to be able to throw the ball is very, very important. So it's so much that goes on that people don't even realize right when the huddle breaks and they're walking up, it's so much communication and everyone is talking down and you got to touch each other. We got to boom, boom, you know what I'm saying? And like, hey, hey, we got to tap on the on the outside. Let the running back know we're fanning or – you know, we got to, hey, hey, we got to tap our helmets. So you got to tap the guy next to you. You know, you got to touch him and, and just make sure that he's communicating who he has if they bring this type of person. So, I mean, there's so much that goes on that starts with the center and that translate out. And then, you know, you got to get to the running back and then it gets to the quarterback. And so we all on the same page. So, you know, if you can be able to mash the protection passing game and the run game together, uh, that's when the offense can really go. And I think it's, it definitely starts with the run game because you got to be able to get those guys up and then you can do the play action and slow down the defense line. 100% agree. Without a pocket, there's nowhere to throw or no place to throw from, and you're going to be in trouble. Next and most important thing, a lot of chatter about the face mask change, right? Yeah, yeah. Are you excited about the – I mean, you've worn the white face mask before. Is it just they're changing it to every game or that's going to be the primary look? I think – I think – I mean, I think that's what Cleveland started with, right? Is the white I face think so. Yeah, okay. I think it was like Otto, is it Otto Graham? I think he was like... Otto Graham with the, with the one bar joint. Yeah, I think that's where it all started. But I think it just so, it just brings back the tradition, if I'm not mistaken. I, that's something that I need to really, really tap into because I know when we did it, we brought it out, I guess, last year or the year before. It was a big deal. So, uh, yeah, I mean... I guess you get back to the basics. Well, I, I I know 
that fashion is something you 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 uh hold in high regard. Your on field look is is usually really really basic. All right, you got wristband <laughs> on the left sleeve. You got the long wrist. You got the quarterback coach on the left. You have I really don't. The long I really wristband don't wear on the that. right. The the what the QB wristband the key the the, the play sheet. Yeah, I really don't like that. But I just gotta wear certain games because certain games have long play calls. And if it's mm-hmm. gonna be loud that game or something like that, then it's like, all right, cool. He might just call it so we have more time to get the ball. Mm-hmm. I might mean, get the, you know what I'm saying, on the ball. But I really you like hate where the, the wristbands on both sides, the regular wristbands. Yeah, that's it. Just regular wristbands, not the creepy. Regular wristbands thing. usually go white shirt that's longer than the jersey that just sticks out a little bit. At least one of the alternate colors. So if you're wearing brown, you, you might wear, wear orange. Brown. You go no, no, just no, say no, brown. No. You say, I go. I say yeah. Whatever the jersey is, I'm wearing that. You just go in t-shirt, you know what I'm saying? You have a very standard look. It's clean. I gotta ask yeah, you. Yeah, it's clean. That's hey, it. Who who are some of the best dressed quarterbacks? You don't have to be now, but just ever. You know what I'm saying? We used to watch. You know, like, oh, okay, I'm gonna take that drip. Uh, I say Cam. Cam was yeah. I feel like Vic was. He was a different. Swag. He had a lot going on. The, the way yeah. he, you know, say he had a lot going on. Yeah, but it was his swag. You feel me? So it matched uh, with his Vic. personality. Correct, exactly. Um, Who else? I like Kyler. Yeah, like, Kyler's real. You know what I'm saying? Kyler's real very, smooth. I like very smooth. You know what I'm saying? He like got a, a good look player. to him. Yeah, he do got to get that baseball yeah, player yeah. vibe. Um. I mean, everyone got their own little, little vibe to it. Them, do, you know like, you know what I'm saying? Like, like, my own's gonna wear the long sleeve. I, you know I'm not, exactly I don't like, how my gonna look. You know exactly what they're gonna wear. You know exactly how they're gonna look. Yeah. I mean, you also got the spat. Just kind of, you, you know, know, everybody got their own flavor. You know, Lamar gonna have the visor, running back, he's chill with the mouthpiece hanging. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? The pass the I don't like Lamar look either. I don't like Lamar look either. <laughs> the mouthpiece hanging as a quarterback, I can't get with. Uh, I don't know how he do it. Because I, I was confused on, like, how he get the snap the snap count. Like, you know what I'm saying? With the pacifier mouthpiece. But mm-hmm. it works. Yeah, whatever he doing, it works. <laughs> <laughs> no, we're not knocking the game. It's just, like, a very, you know, who look like, like, Gino to me looks like someone who, like, takes what they give him in the locker room, throws it on. You know what I'm saying? Very, <laughs> oh, yeah, Gino, yeah, with the little QB towel, like, Gino always looks smooth, like, fresh. But he just looks like. All American quarterback, don't try to do too much. <laughs> Let's look at a couple well, looks. You know what I'm saying? Let's look at Donnell Dawkins. Do you remember this this face mask? The, uh, yeah, that's uh, crazy. Uh. That's is that, crazy. Is that a, are you with the look or is that look out? As a dealer in here, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> My dog out here looking like the Terminator. Ray well, Lewis. Th- this looks yeah, scary Ray to Lewis, me. That's, Ray Lewis yeah, with that's the fire. same type of vibe, face yeah. mask. You know what I'm saying? Lots going on. Oh my gosh. What what is this face mask? Joe Perry. <laughs> Have you seen this joint? No, nah, I've never seen it like that. That's the old days though. So I can't imagine playing back there. Ooh, whatever he had to do to get out there and play, you rocking with? <laughs> I mean, I guess so, but that's crazy. <laughs> How you feel about Dickerson? Goggles underneath the underneath the Dion joint. The goggles is 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 I mean, he can back it up. So like <laughs> he, he was good at the nub, so people wanted to trip it on the goggles. The face mask and helmet, just standard, real like roll the glory helmet. <laughs> that was the, that was the face mask everybody wanted coming out. Ooh, oh yeah, for if sure. If you had to go out there, if you had to go out there in the Joe Theismann joint, is that nah, something you would be with or not? <laughs> nah, I, it won't fit me. I'd be out there looking crazy. <laughs> you know, already got kicked in the eye. Your, your, your joint might have been yeah. gone. Yeah, nah, let's look at Gary Anderson one bar joint. Um, I think he was the last last single bar to hit the game. I just don't know what I'd do if I seen somebody right now today in a Riddell <laughs> speed flex, you know what I'm saying, with the single bar joint. Yeah, that's insane. That's insane, Dang. though, right there. But Danny Thompson, he was I, – I, I, he always had the look, you know what I'm saying, dark, yeah, dark yeah, yeah. That was his. That was his, his swag for sure. Crate. Crazy, crazy uh, face mask game. Why, you know how we close every week? We got to get the Q4 segment. This week, you got to give me your four favorite Cleveland Browns uniforms. Four favorite Cleveland Browns uniforms. 
I'd probably say, shit, that white on white, the alternate ones, go crazy with the white helmets. So I'd say the white on white with the white helmets, it's clean. I love the brown or white pants, it's clean. I love the, oh, the brown or orange is clean if you do it right. And then, oh, it's tough. White jersey, and I would say probably orange pants. But the, I'll probably say orange pants. But then the brown pants go crazy too. I, I gotta give you five. Y'all got the solid brown pants. You got the solid. You got the stripes. Y'all got, got a lot stripes. of a lot of uniforms. Y'all got a lot of uniforms. Yeah, I think the the one the solid ones are the old. I think mm-hmm. they yeah the old ones. They did. We're going back they, to like the traditional the, side. Say less. All right, shoot. Since we're there, you gotta tell me. Do you like the what is it like an elf? Are you an elf guy or are you just a yeah? Standard? I'm an elf. I'm an elf guy for sure. <laughs> yeah, hey, I man. start rocking the elf beanie for sure. Yeah, don't cause too much controversy out here in the Cleveland streets. I know they get about the health and no health. Nah, but I appreciate you. I appreciate the fans for tuning in for another episode of QB and Plug. Make sure y'all hit that like, subscribe, leave a comment so we know how you feel about the show. We make sure we check them out. We read them all. Uh, we really appreciate you and tap into that dog pound community on Locker First.